Okay, so this is Captain Sam G, and I am here today to tell you how to make the greatest Superman game. And try and stick with me to the end before you start throwing up comments, because I am going to address as many issues as I can think of, but some will only make sense if I save them for later. Now, there are four reasons for why I'm making this. For starters, just because I want to, and secondly, because I am tired of constantly seeing videos like why Superman will never have a good video game, constantly popping up as suggestions and recommendations on YouTube. I keep telling YouTube over and over again, no, I am not interested in watching these videos, please stop recommending them. But they keep coming back over and over for months on end until finally, I cave in and I think, okay, it must be kind of good, otherwise YouTube wouldn't be pushing it so hard on me. So I, I watch it, and it's not. And then YouTube starts pushing even more crappy content on me that I do not care about, no matter how many times I tell it to stop, but that's another matter entirely. Basically, I keep seeing these, oh, Superman just can't have a good game type videos, but I don't think I've ever seen a video addressing why he could and so I'm making this to address the balance. In regards to videos discussing why Superman games can't work, they pretty much harp on about the same couple of things, two of which I'll go over now. Well, Superman 64 sucks, so, you know, impossible to make a good Superman game. Oh, yeah. Because a game being awful is indicative of the starring character and not the game itself. Spider-Man 2 on the PC obviously means that a good Spider-Man game could never be achieved, just like the Incredible Hulk video game means a good Hulk game can never be made, so you may as well give up. Just ignore these, I mean, if the other games starring these characters were bad, then these ones can't possibly be good, so you may as well not even look at them. The next so-called argument is that Superman is an overpowered character, and you know, I can see that, I mean, he's like 10,000 times stronger than me, he's way too overpowered. I could never hope to beat him in a fist fight. But luckily, there's all these characters that Superman regularly engages with that are on his level. Superman is not the most powerful character in the DC Universe, not even amongst other superheroes. But even if he was, there's plenty of supervillains that have been created specifically just to be able to match him. I mean, for crying out loud, he's got a bunch of fellow Kryptonians as enemies and clones who are equal to him in every way. But if you still complain that he's too overpowered just because he gets beaten up by his enemies but eventually overcomes them, then you might as well just scrap all mainstream superhero comics because that's all of them. You know what, may as well just throw out all martial arts and action movies too, because Bruce Lee, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and all the rest of them always end up beating the bad guy, so every single action hero is just way too overpowered. Anyway, that's enough ranting for the moment, let's get on to my main focus for the video. You see, I have a list of games that I've made that I'm going to play through extremely long, and I slot in suggestions for games in various places where I think they'd be good. I happen to write down Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction and then Superman Returns just beneath it. And I thought, you know, that would make a really damn good Superman game. And then, as I actually played through Ultimate Destruction, whilst keeping Superman in the very back of my mind, it cemented my idea. So, let me explain. You see, after beating the game and then gaining a million points, you can buy Savage Banner Mode. What this does is let you play the game with Bruce Banner's character model, and suddenly, instead of playing as this 12, 15 foot tall green behemoth, you're now human sized. And so, in my mind at least, everything you do looks far, far more impressive and powerful. In comparison to your size, you're jumping higher, running faster, you're stronger, and it just feels very Max Fleischer-esque. So let me show you how this entire game is perfect for Superman. First off, Bruce Banner, or the Hulk because character models don't change during cutscenes, is Superman. 
starts off with the tutorial showing you how to play, as well as showing that soldiers are being shown how dangerous and powerful Superman is, all narrated by Lex Luthor and his propaganda. Things start out quite like a ways in Superman Birthright or Superman Secret Origin. Lex Luthor, who will be played by Emil Blonsky, has convinced the Metropolis public that this new alien being with vast super extraterrestrial powers, Superman, is a danger to everyone and must be stopped. And Lex has gotten the military on his side, and the military figurehead is General Ross, the father of Betty Ross, Bruce Banner's girlfriend, which I think is especially perfect for this. It, it just fits so well. He's obviously General Lane, the father of Lois Lane, Superman's girlfriend. So, Supes has exiled himself because obviously he doesn't want anyone to be harmed by the military, and Lex constantly attacking him on sight. But at the same time, he needs to find a cure. Wait, a, a cure for what, you ask? Well, in the newer Superman comics, they came up with a new idea about Doomsday. I've no idea if it's all been retconned, as I can no longer be bothered to read anything new by Marvel or DC, but that's a whole nother rant entirely. Anyway, Doomsday has this virus thing in his blood. The two get in a big fight, Doomsday gets wrecked, but now Superman is infected, and he has this Doomsday thing in his head, slowly growing stronger, wanting to take control, have Supes transform into a Doomsday-esque monster and destroy everything. Now, you could have it so that these two alien beings had a big destructive fight that resulted in Doomsday's death, and that's how Superman was revealed to the world, so Lex could capitalise on all that fear, and Supes got infected. Or what I'd prefer is a lot more simple. The monster is just something that's buried deep down in Kryptonian DNA and triggers after enough exposure to yellow sun radiation. Nice and simple, done. Anyway, Supes is in contact with Professor Hamilton, who will be played by Doc Sampson, who wants to help Superman because he knows he's a good guy and he wants to cure him of this monster that will one day break out of him and start going on a rampage. Unfortunately, that's where the game begins. The military, under Luther and General Lane's command, track him down and try destroying him. It obviously doesn't go so well, Supes wrecks everything and escapes. Also, keeping in line with the Max Fleischer theme, for the moment, as his powers are still evolving, no flight, just super jumps. However, abilities like being able to launch himself forwards via punching and doing the classic Superman pose will show that this flying ability is slowly manifesting. And of course, over the course of the game, you'd be able to buy the air dashes to show how it's growing even stronger. Anyway, Supes escapes, but in the surprise attack, they manage to make him bleed. Now, this isn't too unusual. There have been plenty of versions of Superman where he's shown to have trouble fighting against robots and Luther technology and things like that. And he's not invulnerable. Invulnerability gets thrown around so often for powerful characters, people forget its meaning, and that characters like Superman routinely get beaten down or killed by other very powerful characters. The threat just needs to be big enough. So a missile designed by Luther in a surprise attack will do. Anyway, Luther gets the blood, and obviously he's going to be doing tests on it, among other things. Supes meets up with Professor Hamilton at a previously decided out-of-the-way location, such as a church, and they make it their base of operations. Following the same kind of story as Hulk Ultimate Destruction, Supes needs to collect a ton of super science equipment in order to cure himself, while trying to slow down the military's progress in stopping him. Now, at this point you may be thinking, okay, so what about all the destruction? Going around the city, destroying things, would you leave that in? That's not very Superman-like. Don't care. It's awesome. Let me do what I want. The main story may be all about how Supes is a good guy trying to stop something horrible within him being unleashed on the world while trying to expose Lex as a corrupt madman lying to everyone, but just let me do what I want outside of that. If I want to go around obliterating everything, then just let me. I want to have fun in the game. Don't restrict what I can do. 
Plus, hey, it gives Luther more credence that Superman isn't to be trusted, and gives the Superman Task Force something to do. And of course, as the game goes on, the Strike Force will grow more and more powerful, from helicopters to mechs to mega mechs, which will all be designed and built by Luther. But what about the soldiers and the people in control of the helicopters, tanks, mechs, and so on? Is, is Superman just straight up killing them? Well, you don't have to say anything about that. Just have the bodies and the mechs and so on just fade out, and they could be dead or just knocked out. It's up to you and what you'd prefer to think. As for all the assault vehicles, again, no need to clarify in the game. You can think what you want. They could be remote controlled, uh, the vehicle gets wrecked but the passenger survives, whatever. When I was younger, I never even considered that I was killing anyone in Ultimate Destruction as I played through it. Now, as you're gathering all these sciencey things and getting shot by tank shells to the face, Hamilton and, you know what, maybe Lois too, I mean, she's basically a detective, throw her in there, are finding out about just what Lex is up to but obviously not getting a lot of information. Just enough to warn soups of impending danger, things to look out for, locations of more sciencey things, etc. And soups is helping them out on that front too, protecting them whilst they do their detective work. But in the cutscenes, we'll be finding out that Lex is illegally cloning Superman. Just loads of vats of Superman clones, all badly deformed, some flat out dead. And Leslie Willis, aka Livewire, will be taking the place of Mercy in this game, and will start briefly showing up, giving small illusions as to her power, and that she's in Luther's employ. We discover that one of the clones he's creating is a moderate success, but isn't a 100% copy. It's a bit larger and stranger, and it promptly breaks out and starts tearing its way through the base. Soups goes to save the day, but doesn't yet know precisely what's going on. So, Abomination will be a mutating version of Superman, seeing as it was cloned from Soup's blood, and with that blood came that doomsday horribleness that Soups is trying to cure himself of. So, for starters, in Soups and the clone's first fight, the clone will have an extremely bizarro type appearance, grey, cracked features, but instead of a proper costume, he's wearing more of a pod tank suit thing. Soup smashes him up, thinks that that's the end of the creature, but before he can check, has to escape due to the military closing in. Luther carts away the not quite dead body before anyone can find it, wanting to learn more of the first test subject that wasn't a failure or flat out dead, and blames Superman for the base getting wrecked. So now, with Soup's apparently attacking military bases, striking first, Luther gets more and more leeway in what he can create. And so he creates a new super metal alloy, Metallo, and starts building mechs that will keep being improved upon throughout the game. So, Soup's is fighting some mechs as he goes about doing his usual business, and then the big guns come out the first giant mega mech destroyer. Now briefly, and I do mean briefly, just say it's piloted by John Corbin. That's it. Everyone gets the reference, it's the guy who becomes Metallo. That's all you need to do, don't drag it out or give the guy his own special chapter. Just give him the first giant mech suit, call him John Corbin, have him say something like, the power source is fusing to me when you beat him. Job done, no need to do more than that. Keep going with the usual missions of wrecking Hulkbusters, getting science stuff, and then you confront Livewire. Blue lightning, teleporting via lightning strikes, pulses of electricity, all that jazz. When you beat her, have Luther betray her by sending a giant missile strike to yours and her location and blowing everything to kingdom come. No need to specify if she's dead or not, she could have escaped via travelling down an electrical wire or something. Now, after returning from the mission, we get our first look at Doomsday, getting a stronger grasp on Soup's mind, trying to take over, 
showing the player what Superman has been scared of all along. And keep the intelligence and taunting. I love that about Devil Hulk. Very chilling. Also, keep this Doomsday looking pretty much identical to the Devil Hulk because it's such a good design. Shame to waste it. Lex keeps coming up with new ways to try and combat Superman, such as gas attacks, and giant mechs are more common, sending one, two, then three of them after Supes to try and completely crush him. Of course, Supes will end up winning, just about. The clone of Supes will be revealed to be growing more dangerous, larger, more monstrous looking, pod suit, in rags, with Lex all the while arrogantly thinking he can control it and keep it locked down. As time goes on, Supes will have to completely destroy the bases Luther is putting out in the city. Half because he needs to, half because that Doomsday voice is starting to pop up as he's going around, influencing him. After this, Professor Hamilton, thinking that they're losing control of the situation, sets Superman up, leading him into a trap. Part of the island evacuated, and the big, big, biggest guns you've ever seen come out. General Lane, controlling an absolute titan of a mech. Supes beats it, but is weakened, and in such a weakened state, the gas attacks from before this time work. Supes awakens in the vault, a giant underground complex with a prison just for him. It's the same place his clone is being kept. The player finds out Hamilton was the one to betray him, thinking he may be able to help Superman better like this, but was obviously wrong. As Lex experiments on him, Supes' mind opens up further, allowing Doomsday a huge leap towards gaining greater control, and it reveals that it calls itself Doomsday. Supes busts out of the impossible to escape from container, because he's Superman, and then you have to break out of the entire facility, all surrounding defences, until you get to a jump marker and escape back to the church. Hamilton gets a huge reprimanding from Supes and Lois, before revealing that he also stole vital technology to help Supes break free of this demon trying to take over. Needing a few last components to try and rid himself of the monster within, he breaks into the military compound, and something stupid like what happened in the Hulk game would be great, but I'd also like to see Supes just dressing up as a soldier, putting on glasses, and everyone being fooled as he just walks on through. Anyway, after the more comedy-styled mission and a trying-to-trap-Superman-again mission, Supes has to defend the church whilst Hamilton works on building the device, their location having been found by Lex. All sorts of defences sent after them. Once they've all been defeated, into Supes' mind we go, where we face off against Doomsday in a battle for ultimate control. Superman beats him into oblivion and banishes Doomsday from his mind. In the meantime, Clone Superman, going through the same thing, is fully taken over by its doomsday, becoming fully monstrous in appearance. Breaking out from another of Luther's arrogant, impossible to break out of restraints, and starts destroying the vault and all manner of illegal experiments Lex has been doing. Superman once again goes to save the day, but as Supes tries making his way to the vault, all of the military are fighting him, because, you know, they won't just let him help. He has to again go through all their defences and bust his way inside. He finds out, from Lex, that the creature is a clone of him gone disastrously wrong. And that's when the monster comes crashing through the room. It's Doomsday. Enormous, muscular, grey, bones protruding out of him. Doomsday. And less of the eloquent intelligence that the Doomsday inside Superman's mind had, more just a raving monster that wants to kill and pretty much only talks about killing and destroying things. Cue the fights across the desert, with the military finally figuring out maybe Luther's ideas aren't the best, and maybe we should try helping Superman fight that monstrous thing. 
after fighting Doomsday across the deserts, finally, we get to fight him by the dam. He's intent on destroying the dam and flooding and killing all of Metropolis, whilst also fighting against Superman. Soups contains him until people can be evacuated. Doomsday apparently kills himself as he's so intent on unleashing the flood. And this is where I'd introduce flying, but I'm not too sure, it might be better to not include it at all at this point, but I quite like the idea for what it means later. So, make it as fast as sprinting and thrice as fast as that when flight sprinting. That'll do. Just a very quick thing, just fly to where the giant cliff is and then that activates the next cutscene, where Soups punches it so hard it makes a landslide of boulders, stopping the flood with a natural dam. Cutscenes then reveal most of Luther's experiments have been destroyed and that a lot of his latest technology originates from conspiring and making deals with some super advanced alien being. Obviously Brainiac. And in Doomsday's Rampage, all clones have been destroyed. Except one. He can't clone from it because the DNA is too deteriorated, or something like that, and the sample of Superman blood that he originally had has been wiped out, so this is the last clone. However, he managed to stabilise it in the early stage of its transformation, and is in an eyes-opened, comatose state. And from its perspective, inside the pod tank thing, the grey, cracked face clone sees the logo on its chest as backwards. Yeah, of course, this one's going to be the real Bizarro. Anyway, following from that, news stories and such on how Luther fabricated evidence, was lying all along thanks to Hamilton Lois's investigations, illegal experiments, indirectly almost causing the destruction of Metropolis, uh, causing destruction himself and pinning it on Superman, is awaiting trial. Superman is a hero, but the strike teams will stick around just in case he does go bad. All that good stuff. And from then on, you are free to, well, free roam. Do all the challenges that are dotted around the map, whatever. Plus, as you're now able to fly, there should also be a replay mode, which is what the Incredible Hulk game did have, so you can replay with all the upgrades you've got, plus able to fly, so you can see how the game changes with that ability added in. And of course, you're free to just not use the flying ability if you think the game is better with just super jumps. Oh, and things like the thunderclap which you buy and those super area effect attacks, just change it to be like a big explosion of heat beams or something. And of course, lots of different costume unlocks. So you can go around in different Superman costumes, or once beating the game, even pretending that you're Bizarro, so just roaming around and destroying everything to your heart's content feels more suitable. Oh, and when you do beat the game, and it tells you all this stuff, New Game Plus, etc., maybe not add it, but I'd like it. Like a knife to the gut, a dreaded responsibility washes over you as the game tells you how many civilians died over the course of playing through the story missions. And only the story missions, not just going about having fun. As I said before, no clarification over whether Soups is killing anyone inside helicopters, tanks, etc. But the knowledge of how many civilians died because of the crossfire and all the explosions and everything going off would really mess with you and make you feel like Superman because you can do your best to save the world and stop all the bad guys and so on and so on, but you can't save everyone. But hey, that's more a personal feeling on it. I think most people would probably find that stupid. Anyway, that's my idea on how to make the greatest Superman game. And at this point you may be thinking, oh, come on, that was lazy as hell. You didn't come up with anything new, anything original. All you did was completely rip off another game. That's just lazy. Well, reason number three on why I made this video. That's the point. When it comes to making a great Superman game, those who say it can't be done think it's just straight up impossible without coming up with something entirely new that's never been seen before. It would take a literal genius to come up with the correct mechanics to make a Superman game work. Uh, you also hear 
Well, Superman Returns was a good starting point with Superman not having a health bar. It just didn't do it very good. Well, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't take some groundbreaking new thought process to come up with a great Superman game. You can make a great Superman game with the simplest game mechanic in the world. There's a bunch of bad guys. Go wreck them. It's so easy, you can just completely rip off a PS2 game that came out in 2005, 11 years ago as I record this, and it works. This game is absolutely perfect for Superman, but unfortunately someone just forgot to make the character models properly and didn't slap a Superman logo on the front cover. Hell, there's quite a few games that were supposed to be about Superman, but I guess someone just majorly screwed up. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. Obviously, this was supposed to be very combat-centred, with hundreds of different locations, Metropolis, Fortress of Solitude, the Moon, different alien worlds, etc. And it was supposed to have the whole Superman family, even pets, plus tons of different supervillains, and the main storylines would go through all the best and especially craziest Superman comics, especially from the Silver Age. Uh, Wonderful 101, where you just start off super weak but grow in power over the course of the game and the stakes just keep going up and up and up and up until you're fighting against all cosmic stuff threatening the entire Earth. Uh, an actually great non-movie tie-in version of Superman Returns. Justice League Heroes! Seriously, why haven't they just made another one of these? I love this game. Uh... Ah, hell with it. It's a massive stretch. Probably doesn't work, but I just thought of it, so I'll say it. Ratchet & Clank 3, because it's one of the only ones I've played. Soup's going to different planets via spaceship. Different coloured suns playing havoc with his powers, so he's doing all sorts of stuff at various power levels, all while trying to stop Brainiac from consuming planets and harvesting information and technology. Uh, th this one isn't even a singular game. L.A. Noir mixed with GTA 5 with mods. Go around as Clark Kent with Lois Lane, investigating really elaborate crimes and stuff, then go arrest the bad guys as Superman. Hey, this one's been brought up in quite a few forums due to the super speed, crazy powers, gliding, and all manner of goodness. Saints Row 4, Darkseid taking over and bringing war to Earth. All the power and amazingness on Earth, but when you try facing him or his forces, you have to do so on power-negating ships, so you're forced to take up different armaments until Lex can fashion you a suit to stand up to him. Plus Lois, Jimmy, all the super pals helping you out along the way. Plus getting their own super suits and stuff, why not? Hell, there's a bunch of games that play like Hulk Ultimate Destruction just without so many perfect character recasts. Uh, what about ripping off Prototype for a super edgy Elseworld Superman that's constantly ripping monsters and soldiers in half? I'm sure at least Zack Snyder would love it. Uh, Leisure Suit Larry! Well, okay, maybe not that one, but still, you don't have to come up with some game-changing, never-before-thought-of idea to make a great Superman game. It's actually already out there in multiple forms. The list goes on. It's just the makers somehow accidentally forgot to make Superman and Co. the main characters in those games. But unfortunately, after all of that, me hammering away at the idea that yes, an absolutely amazing Superman game can easily be made, unfortunately, <sighs> let's just say, miraculously, impossibly, this video gets a million views and uh, 50,000 likes and everyone floods Twitter with we want a Superman game. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever get a great Superman game. May not even get a mediocre movie tie-in game for a very long time. And it's not because it can't be done. It's because Superman has had so many bad games that no one wants to touch him. There seems to be an unfortunate mentality with game developers in that if they can't take all the money, they want none. If a game isn't going to make ridiculous stacks of cash and break records, they don't want to know. How many games have you played that you loved, they sold well, but because they weren't AAA mega money making factories of wealth, they just never got a sequel? 
hell. Ubisoft even admits it wants to make $60 customers into $200 customers, focusing on DLC for the same series of games they keep churning out more than anything else. It's all about money, and making as much as possible, and making a giant franchise of crap. It is not about picking up a bunch of different ideas that people want to see get done, and making a bunch of different games to make a nice tidy profit on each. They want all the money, all the everything in one big go. And so, no one is ever going to take what they deem to be a risk with Superman. And so, that comes up to reason number four as to why I made this. We're probably never going to get a great Superman game, even though it can be done. So, the next best thing I can hope for is if some talented modders, some decent artists and voices, end up modding the hell out of the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Because it's an old PS2 game and all the files and whatever are out there for emulation. Change the character model somehow, hell, I don't know how modding works. Draw up and colour some very simple cutscenes with voiceovers, things like that. Taking as many of the suggestions as I've put up in this video, and that'll do. A heavily modded, story and voice changed Ultimate Destruction game will be the closest I could ever get to my perfect Superman game. Because no one else is going to do it. And I suppose until then, I'll just keep reading more threads on how Rocksteady should make a Superman game, hoping that they will, whilst knowing deep down it will most likely never happen. But hey, hopefully I'll be proven extremely wrong, and there is a company out there that has the passion and drive to give us what we want without resorting to a lazy, rushed movie tie-in cash grab. And on that note, I hope you've enjoyed this. Give me suggestions for games you'd like to see me play, and join me next time where I'll be playing in an alternate Marvel Universe where the Green Goblin takes up the mantle of a superhero, all the way at the beginning of the Spidey Saga. So, until then, bye for now. Oh, and one last thing. I made this entire video without mentioning fucking kryptonite.